Hell yeah. This is it. I'm excited. Holy shit. A six foot tondo or circular stretcher. What I've got in mind for this is I'm revisiting some themes from my first show with Unit London and I'm going to be making another basically like a big ass emoji and it's kind of in the similar vein as the two that I, I did and presented during my exhibition Big Mood in 2021 but this is going to be bigger and better so let's open it up and of course in the studio we've got one two and three cameras kind of helping us with a nice immersive experience but okay so i'm just kind of ripping it apart from here and it looks like this is probably a side sitting thing now th this this set of stretchers is from a company called Crohn's Custom Woodworking, and if I am not mistaken, well actually, I don't have to guess. They are M O. Is that Missouri, Montana? It's the M O state, but they're in Fairgrove, M O. This is a 72 inch um, diameter or six feet or about 185 centimeters. My height, pretty much exactly. Okay. So they are out there and, and I'm very grateful to them. By the way, this set of stretchers cost $295, not including shipping. Shipping was, I think, 35, so it's a very reasonable price. And uh, this is the second time that I've purchased stretchers from them. The first time was with, um, when I did my show with Unit and they were just such a dream to work with. They're very easy to assemble and everything and it's pretty, self-explanatory kind of although now I'm looking at them and I'm like <laughs> that might need some explanatory okay so there's some numbers on these we're gonna just kind of figure it out okay I think we'll, I think we'll do all right. so we've got the three right here so I need something to bang on that with a hammer which I don't like to do but and that's just because it kind of makes those little dents but I think I can actually work around that yeah you see so they're just like uh, pieces of a puzzle that you just put together it's kind of cool All right, so now that we have the base of the circle down, this next part is essentially what's gonna give us the lip so that we can stretch canvas over it. And I think the way that they've done this is you're meant to stagger them so that when you connect these, they don't line up like this. They line up kind of off center so that you have some stability. So, Essentially, it doesn't really matter how I position this part as long as these are connected numerically to their proper order. So that means with this guy, we've got four here, we've got four right here, and these should be a set. This guy, which is a like a hanging cleat, and you just you yeah you mount this shit to the wall and you use it to, to hang it. I'll show you guys how to do this later though. Got some wood glue, very kind. All right, so this is what we need. So the big holes are going to be when you line up the big holes, you're gonna line them up and you're gonna pin them in place with one of these. 
and then in between that the idea is to screw two screws and then use another wooden dowel and that's how you basically keep everything in place uh, so in my case what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna hammer these guys in but I'm not gonna use the support screws because I'm gonna be disassembling these to send them so I'm only gonna put these these in there and I'm gonna rely on basically the stretched canvas over it to kind of keep everything in place nice and tight. So we've got this one here and we're lining up this outer rim here. And just as a quick aside, I really think this is such a great method of uh, making these stretchers, man. Now I'm kind of wondering if maybe I should pop a screw in at least a couple of them. And actually really, I think I, I probably only need to do like one per, <laughs> I'm like making up all these rules. It's not how it works, bro. All right, let's see. Let's give it a standing test. Oh, that's sturdy, dude. That is sturdy and stable and beautiful. Look at that. Behold. Sweet. Okay, now next thing to do is stretch some canvas. And of course here we've got the big duck straight from Georgia, straight from Georgia. Big duck canvas, much appreciated. So I don't wanna annihilate the canvas sheet around it, so I'm gonna cut and try to pull it out instead of cutting it down the middle. I'm using a pretty dull blade to cut lengthwise down this canvas sheet, by the way. So I'm not really risking any tears or anything like that. So now I have to determine how much canvas I need for my stretchers. It's a six foot set of stretchers and I know that I have a seven foot width canvas and I know that that's more than enough. So I'm simply going to use that measurement on the length as well so that I have a square piece of fabric. And I know that I'll have enough six inches or so on each end to fold over. Oh, got the whole thing in one go, kind of. And I've still got this plastic sheet that we saved from earlier. We were careful not to damage, and here is why. And now we can store this guy for later. Flip. Bring our big boy. Crazy footprints on the back, but that's okay. Stapling time. So we're gonna essentially treat this like a square. Now I'm gonna the diagonals. Here's where we'll have like a whole lot of canvas. And that's pretty much it, dude. So it's ready to ship. <laughs> All right, let's keep going. exact science but I just don't you know I don't seem to find a whole lot of videos on here on how to do this so I feel like there's you just kind of got to try it out but the little method that I'm saying could seems to be working you just do the four corners and a fold on each side as you get smaller 
So one thing that is going to be basically unavoidable is bits of this kind of chunky bunch up here on the edges. And that is essentially because I am using the thickest possible canvas that I can, which is, um, I think it's a 15 ounce. But it's a very thick canvas, um, and so like no matter what I do, I'm gonna get some of that kind of bunching up on the edges there. If you wanna avoid it in your own work, you can just use a lighter canvas. Now lastly, what I'm going to do as a final preparatory measure is to cut some of this excess off. And this is just so it's not hanging while I'm trying to roll this thing around. I kinda feel like this is what they do to pit bulls. And now, for the first time, our beautiful six foot Tondorino. Thing of beauty right there, baby. Beautiful Tondorino. Let's give him a quick dust off of the broom. All right, well, luckily I got my spray gun cleaned up this morning, so we can put some paint down now.